The Indian government has pledged to ban single-use plastics by 2020. Not only India. Recently, G20 nations also agreed on a deal to reduce marine plastic pollution. The International Plastic Bag Free Day is observed every year on July 3rd. It is celebrated to communicate to the masses that the world free of plastic bag is possible and that there are substitutes to single-use plastic bags. This plastic, chips, packets or any type of packets what we are using, that's containing three to four different layers. Now government is telling that ban these type of plastics also multi-layered as well as the plastics which has a thickness of less than 50 microns. Why to ban these type of plastics? We are not banning so far because this has with this plastics with this multi-layer plastic we are increasing the life of the whatever the material is there inside the pouch but uh, disposal is an issue because we can't we are just disposing it in the landfill side because they are so lightweight why can't we separate out these plastics from these layers and so from this we have separated these plastic layers and this can be used in making tiles as well as in making diesel or petroleum also in India, Himachal Pradesh became the first state to ban plastic bags in 2009. Currently, either partial or complete plastic ban has been imposed in over 25 states of India, including Delhi, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Goa, Gujarat, Odisha, Tamil Nadu and Uttarakhand. But the question remains, do these bans work? According to reports, by 2050, the oceans could have more plastic than fish in them. Around 8 million tons of plastic end up in the oceans every year. According to the UN Environment, it causes damage to marine ecosystems to the tune of 13 billion US dollars each year. 1 million plastic drinking bottles are purchased every minute around the world. And up to 5 trillion single-use plastic bags are used worldwide every year. About 300 million tons of plastic waste is produced every year, which is almost equivalent to the weight of the entire human population. And the figures for India are shocking too. India's tallest rubbish mountain, the Ghazipur landfill, is located in Delhi NCR and is on course to rise higher than the Taj Mahal by 2020. The Taj Mahal is 73 metres high. The Ghazipur landfill spans across an area of 70 acres, which is equal to 40 football pitches. It rises by nearly 10 metres every year and is currently more than 65 metres high. When we talk of the plastic waste, what is generated in India, 690 tons of plastic waste is generated in Delhi itself. When we talk of Delhi, 690 tons and that's a big number. When we talk of Maharashtra, Mumbai or Kolkata or Chennai, they are producing 400 tons and that way. So 15,500 15, tons of plastic waste is generated in India daily. That means 54 lakh tons of plastic waste is generated and only partial of 20 to 30 percent only is recycled, rest all is going in the landfill sites and that's a big issue. According to researchers, only 9 percent of 8.3 billion tons of plastic waste is recycled, about 12 percent is destroyed by burning and 79 percent ends up in landfills, dumps or natural environment. To tackle this global issue, masses can contribute individually to bring the change like Afroz Shah, who has won the UN Environment Award for cleaning up Varsova Beach. This Mumbai-based lawyer proves that citizens can also make a difference in protecting the environment. He was bestowed with the Champions of the Earth Award in 2016. Shah has removed over 23 million kgs of plastic from the coastline through his beach cleaning campaign. The CSIR National Physical Laboratory of India has come up with solutions to tackle plastic pollution in India. We have to find some solution. There are three solutions for this type of plastic waste. Either it can be used in road designing, plastic roads are there, that concept is already, is already there, like Bangalore Mesur Highway that is made up from this one. Second concept is whether we can use waste plastics in making fuels, diesel, petroleum. And third application is how we can make these tiles. Send these tiles to Hyderabad also, Bamboo House is there, Municipal Corporation, they have taken up the thing, Gurgama, that's a recent introduction. Only three kinds of polymers can be used to make plastic tiles as they don't emit hazardous gases. They are polypropylene or PP, low-density polyethylene or LDPE or high-density polyethylene which is HDPE. So one uncle came over and uh, he started scolding us. 
why you you know generating a more plastics and i just asked him a simple question you must be using comb you must be using buckets you must be using mugs what do you do once once it you know breaks and all we just throw it off so we are purchasing that type, that plastics which we are throwing off which we are using we are throwing it off and we are using that to make make you know these tiles so first we segregate that plastic according to their polymer and the color wise then we do wash trading part and then it goes for the washing and mixing part and then finally we make a plastic granules that is also called pellets so after that pellets we the our pellets come into the injection molding machine from where we manufacture our plastic tiles if you calculate the overall cost of the tile laying down of the tiles the our tiles is much cheaper than in comparison to the cement tiles The plastic tiles used for pavements come with a guarantee of 50 years. The tiles can sustain heat up to 140 degrees Celsius and cold up to minus 25 degrees Celsius. And the best part about these tiles is that if they get damaged, they can be reused to manufacture new ones. Let's do our bit to reduce the problem of plastic waste in India.